5 Ways to Follow God's Plan for Your Life Matthew 4 19 20 says, Follow me and I will make you fishers of men. Immediately they left their nets and followed him. God has a plan for your life and mine. Simon and Andrew's life plan with Christ started right in that very verse. How can you know what is God's plan for your life? The Bible is chock full of truth and wisdom on how we all can follow God's plan for us. As always, let us look into the inspired word of God, the Holy Bible, for concrete answers. Trust in God's judgment, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for welfare and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. This needs to be the first stepping stone in a believer's journey. God had a plan for you before you were even born. As believers, we can follow God's plan for us by believing that He has everything in control and His sovereignty will guide us exactly where He wants us to go. God led you here, just as He will lead you onto other places whether it be a local, non-local mission, church function, soup kitchen, or homeless shelter. There are so many places to shine God's love which is why He has a plan set out for each one of us. If God impresses compassion on you for someone else, then let the Holy Spirit guide you to help that person, whether it is praying for them, feeding them, clothing them, or spreading the good news of salvation to them. One great way to see what God has planned for your life is to look at the skills that you have been blessed with. Exodus 35, Thirdaminus 35 has Moses speaking to Israel about specific men with specific skills that they were given by God to use for his glory. God has blessed me musically, so I serve him in the church worship team. Do you like public speaking? Maybe consider being a preacher. Do you like hands-on activities? Maybe consider missions or becoming a caretaker of the church. If you aren't already involved in your church, please consider the skills you have been given by God and see how you can benefit his kingdom. Be in prayer. Prayer is the way to stay connected with God through open communication. If you don't know what God's plan is for you, ask him in prayer. And this is the confidence that we have toward him that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us in whatever we ask, we know that we have the requests that we have asked of him. When you pray that God's will be done in your life, God will always show you your next step in his plan. 1 Thessalonians 5:17 says to pray without ceasing. While trusting in God to lead us, it is important that we stay in contact with him. God still yearns for a relationship with us. As we honor him in prayer, he will guide us according to his will. Be intentional. Stay committed in love. If I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith, so as to move mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. If I give away all I have, and if I deliver up my body to be burned, but have not love, I gain nothing. You can be sure of one thing. God's plan for you involves love. You may be doing what the Holy Spirit has placed on your heart and mind, but if you are only active in your mind and leave your heart behind, then you are missing the point, my friends. Be active in God's plan while loving those that you are in contact with. Keep your heart engaged in every opportunity you have to do the Lord's work. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. Answer when God calls. Any time that you see a need and you have the resources to provide, then answer the call. If God has placed a burden on your heart to love children, please consider adoption or a children's ministry. If God has placed a burden on you to love the elderly, please consider helping out in retirement homes or helping the elderly at the grocery store with their bags. If God has placed a burden on you to help feed the hungry, please consider serving in a soup kitchen or giving food items to a food drive. There are so many places that all of us can serve. When God calls, he is serious. Matthew 25, 35 minus 40 says, For I was hungry and you gave me food, I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me, I was naked and you clothed me, I was sick and you visited me, I was in prison and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you drink? And when did we see you a stranger and welcome you, or naked and clothe you? And when did we see you sick or in prison and visit you? And the king will answer them, Truly, I say to you, as you did it to one of the least of these my brothers, you did it to me. You see, my friends, that whenever you serve another person, you are also serving Christ and answering the call. Matthew 25, 41-46 says the exact opposite of the previous passage. It tells of how those who reject the hungry, thirsty, naked, sick and in prison will also be rejected from entering heaven because rejecting another human being is also rejecting Christ himself. Please answer when God calls. Whenever you ignore his call, you are ignoring him. 
Whenever you listen and respond to his call, you are serving him too. Conclusion. These are only five of many ways that we can follow the plan that God has for us. I hope and pray that if you don't know what God is doing in your life right now that you will spend time faithfully in prayer, asking our Father what his will is for your life. As always, I encourage you all to live a life worthy of the calling. God bless you.